The EU and Germany have been very reluctant to ban gas. And in this video, I will show you that it is possible to live with our Russian gas. The European Union imported 150 billion cubic meters of Russian gas in 2021. To substitute that, we have several alternatives. The first is to use LNG, the gas that comes by boat from Qatar or the United States. We're currently importing 1 to 2 billion cubic meters of LNG per week more than in 2021. That could become up to 100 billion cubic meters, that is close to two thirds of what we need by the end of the year. We can also use gas storage. We have 33 billion cubic meters, around one fifth of what we need in gas storage in Europe. We could leverage that to avoid the disruption in the event of an immediate gas ban. We can also take advantage of the largest gas reserve field in Europe, which is right now closing. This field is in Groningen in the Netherlands and has 500 billion cubic meters of gas. It could replace just by its own, without any other measure, three years of Russian imports. We used to pump almost 88 billion of cubic meters from this field until recently, but last year we took only 10 billion cubic meters. Not only are we pumping less gas out every year, but as I told you, they're going to close it. This decision is due to political pressure has built against the gas field due to the appearance of mini earthquakes. However, the value of these reserves is enormous. Let's do some simple math. The field has more than 500 billion cubic meters. Since Grunengen gas has low caloric value, its cubic meter yields 35 million joules of energy. This can be converted to megawatts and the megawatt hour is around 100 euros. So the economic value of the reserves comes to almost 500 billion euros. 500 billion euros. We could give more than 800,000 euros to each Groningen inhabitant to compensate for the inconveniences and to gain their approval to reopen the field. Finally, we can replace the gas in the generation of electricity by other for source of energy, including nuclear. Let's think of Germany as an example. 40% of Germany's total gas comes from Russia, but 30% of all of the German gas is used to generate electricity. If we replace just the gas that is used to generate electricity, we could almost not need any Russian imports. Now, if you look at the electricity means, you see that there are renewables, nuclear, and other sources which are independent from Russia. Renewables cannot quite replace all the gas since they are intermittent, and we cannot store easily the renewables, so nuclear is really the only real substitute. But Germany has been closing nuclear reactors since it decided to do so in 2011. And last year they closed three, this year they plan to close the last three. But if you think that half of the gas is covered by LNG, for example, and you reopened the three just closed and opened four more of the ones recently closed, you basically can replace all of the imports. The arguments used to avoid this, to me, just show lack of political will. And the conclusion is clear. Not only must we ban gas for moral reasons, we must ban it also for economic reasons, because a long-lasting war has greater economic effects than a drastic measure with limited impact. And we can afford, as I showed you, to do so. What we decide what to do, Putin is taking action. He can use this weapon against us rather than we use it against him, as he did cutting the gas to Poland and Bulgaria. He's trying to divide us. We cannot spend any more time without taking action because the fate of Europe is at stake.